The COVID-19 pandemic provides a good opportunity for businesses to do some re-evaluation, ask questions about how to improve efficiency after this blows away. Notwithstanding the losses incurred as a result of COVID-19 pandemic worldwide, I dare say that this is a rare opportunity for businesses. This may be the best time to dot the I's and cross the T's, making necessary adjustments to strengthen operations, service delivery, and other major aspects that are vital to the growth and any stability of an organization. In this piece, Plus TV Africa takes a look at how Nigerian businesses survived under the lockdown. I'm going to talk to you briefly about the impact of COVID on my life. Now, I am an event planner from Majestically Rare Events. And before COVID-19, I was very busy. I was doing back-to-back -back events. And in March, I had planned 50th birthday party, an international event for women, and a newspaper award ceremony. But just like everybody, everything got shut down. But because I have trained my mind positively, even though it was, it was you know, I was panicked at first, I just had to get into Motive, you know, action mode. So what I did was I started to do a lot of things virtually. You know, I did a virtual challenge with other entrepreneurs, and I called it reignite, reignite confidence for entrepreneurs. And some of those strategies that I was sharing, I'm actually doing them right now in this season. So I am doing a lot more virtual events. In fact, as we speak, I'm planning a virtual party, and I had one just a few days ago. Um, I've also done a lot of memor I've done memorial services online, and I've been a speaker for an online platform. So it's just been great digitally, just getting into that digital space. And I'm actually trying to get my clients to come on, you know, that my event clients have done, you know, traditionally done things offline. I'm trying to get them to come online and do things like TGI Fridays online. So also another thing that I've done is I have actually written two ebooks in this season, one on purpose and one on confidence. And I am just marketing those ebooks everywhere. I've been on social media a lot with them, and I do plan to take them to Kindle in the next you know, few days and other platforms like Bamboo, you know, just as many platforms I can to sell my ebooks. So, you know, my strategy for this season is to keep myself busy. I've trained myself too. I'm a life purpose coach. I did that in this season too. And yeah, basically just keeping myself busy, keeping, a, keeping my mental state strong. So avoiding any negative conversations that are going to make me stressed, keeping away from stressful people, you know, just really being... All right, away from that now, we have joining us uh, a COVID-19 survivor to speak to us, her reality, Yemisi Dawodu. Thank you, Yemisi, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Congratulations, Yemisi. It's good to always speak to a survivor. We are happy that we're having this conversation with you. What was it like when you first got the confirmation that you were COVID-19 positive, if I may ask? Well, I wouldn't lie. Um, I was I was rather calm because I guess in a way I had prepared myself beforehand. I had suspected it could be um, COVID. I wasn't in denial. So by the time the, I took the test and it came back positive, I wasn't worried. I wasn't scared because I had prepared my mind that it could be COVID. All right. And when it indeed it became uh, COVID, you just had to go straight into uh, medication. How did you, were you, did you have to go away or tell us, take us through that time of you, you, your life? Well, what had happened was that the, the, the minute I, I started feeling unwell, I suspected it could be COVID. So I had started um, on medication. But um, one of the reasons you started, why I, I sorry, you started, started on early. medication. Uh, yeah, Missy, just to clarify, you started yes. on medication even before you got tested or you got your result. Am I correct? Yes, mm. that is correct. That is because I had um, symptoms that I had heard about on social media. I, I had a um, headache. I had body ache. I had sore throat. I had, had lost the ta my taste buds. My smell sense had gone. And that's one of my strongest points, my, my smell sense. And food burnt on the fire, I, I did not smell it. Then I, later, I became breathless. And I'm also asthmatic.
So I did not want to take chances. Right. So I started taking my um, the medication. And um, later I got um, tested. And then the results came out and it was positive. But um, by the time the results came out and it, um, I was positive, most of the symptoms of the of, um, that I was feeling had gone, they'd left, but I was still breathless. Mm. And that was what, what gave me more, more concern because, I'm a, like I said, I'm asthmatic. And that was one of the reasons why I was um, told I had to come into the isolation center so that they could keep an eye on me and to make sure I don't get an asthma attack. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've, so had, was, uh, uh, we've had some survivors who had spoken to us, you know, and different people mentioned they used different things. You know, some even used some uh, herbal concoction. What, what sort of medication were you given? Did you recognize any of the kind of medicines that you were given? Well, the first day that I started having symptoms, I got tested for malaria, typhoid, and I did a full blood count. And it came up that I had malaria. Mm -hmm. um, so I started taking, um, I think, um, one of the malaria drugs, I can't remember which one. And then um, I also, when I started getting breathless, I started taking um, Zithromax. And of course, um, I continued with my vitamins because I started taking all my vitamins even before, um, I mean, during the lockdown, before I even got um, infected. Mm. So, um, but when I got into the isolation center, they actually continued, what they um, concentrated on more, more was my asthma. They were very particular that I didn't get an asthma attack, which I sort of did, I actually did but they controlled it. So it was mainly because of the underlying issues that you know, they worried for me. All right. Uh, yeah, see, there are so many people who have tried going for testing, and we hear you know, different, um, they re we recount different sort of experiences. Uh, there are some who have not been able to get testing after going in and out of hospital several times. But you had the testing done. What was the process of testing like? And some have also said that it looks uncomfortable. Is that exactly the case? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I... I was in Ogun State. I got tested in Ogun State. And I really don't know the procedure for Lagos. But um, in Ogun State, um, it wasn't difficult to get tested. I just went in. I, I called beforehand. I got the relevant um, number, number of them where I could get tested. I went in. I was told to come in when, I, um, when they told me to. And then I went in, got tested. Um, the process, I... I had also thought it would be really bad and painful. But all I kept thinking was, I remember when I had um, my, my first child, I had, had an epidural. And all I kept thinking when the, the needle was going in was, you're going to get paralyzed if you move. You're going to get paralyzed. So I just stayed, I know, so I just remained still when the, the um, instrument was going up my nose. I made sure I didn't move. And it was, um, it was uncomfortable, but it wasn't painful. Because I've actually had the test done now three times. And take it for me. For, for me to go through that test and tell you it's not that bad. It's not that bad. All right. Thank because you. I'm not that, um, I'm not that um, hospital friendly or test friendly or anything like that. <laughs> when you say you're not hospital fr friendly, I, I can really relate to that. Thank you so very much, Yemisi Dawudu, for speaking to us. And congratulations. <laughs> we are happy you. for you. And keep safe out there. Thank you. All right. We'll take a quick Thank break. Thank you when, so much. When we return, it will be the entertainment news with Ifeo Thank Mai. you.